Okay, welcome to Stampscaping 101. We have our Cave of Diamonds scene here. This is a scene that I've been wanting to do for a while, but um, these experiments on the foil cards kind of gave me the, uh, oh, I don't know, the excuse to get around to doing it again, because, I don't know, these, these um, kind of mirrored uh, silver foil cards, they kind of give you, I don't know, twice the bang for the buck so to speak you stamp um imagery on the top half of the scene and you get it reflected in the bottom so it's almost like you have to do i don't know one half of the stamping it's not exactly that because we you know we do stamp in the uh the lower section but um it really does give uh the scenes or the projects i guess you could say um so much extra dimension by have by having that reflected element in there okay now i've stamped out a couple of my rocks on the top and where the the bottom of the brookside boulders that's the boulders on the right side of that white piece of a uh, cardstock is um the lower section um i plan to have down in the foil and then um We'll have the foreground down there where I'm kind of uh, estimating my uh, boulders with lichen stamp is going to go. Okay, so I'm doing what we call blocking out of the uh, surface down there. And that's because if we don't do that, then the rocks themselves are going to be mirrored. Okay, and I really want um, the rocks to be more of an opaque type of... Um, I don't know, structure than um, a transparent one, which they would look like if you stamped them directly onto the foil, you know. They would be, uh, I don't know, chrome, just like the, uh, the the surface of the water down there. And that's what that uh, mirrored area is supposed to represent. Okay, so I'm going to have a couple of uh, smaller rocks in the water as well, so I'm blocking out um, in there. And as you can see, I'm not measuring it out precisely. I'm not doing some kind of cutout mask or anything like that because where you stamp that or where you apply that white and where it shows up in the stamp itself, it's going to represent a lighter area of those objects, okay? And the nature of lighting is that, you know, lighting isn't even and uniform, so you can have darker areas on objects. So that pretty much lets us off the hook. You don't have to be precise um, with any of these types of applications. And you'll see that throughout the entire process here. And that's the thing that really confuses people and makes people think that this process is a lot harder, but it's kind of interesting that being imprecise, not having to um, color things exactly, not having to place things exactly, that suddenly becomes something that's um, a harder notion than um, exact placement and uh, doing careful masking and careful coloring between lines, etc. You know, and it's, I understand it too because people can't tell where one image ends and the other one begins. They can't tell where you started coloring with first, but, and that's because it's a much looser process. It's a much more wide open one. And people are just used to being able to see exactly what they're doing along the way. And I wouldn't say that you don't know exactly what you're doing along the way. It's just a much more free type of um, application of both stamps and media okay now those there's the lower section of the boulders with uh or brookside boulders there and you can see i mean i'm not i didn't measure it or anything like that it'll just merge with that top section of the uh brookside boulders just fine okay now i'm adding in some extra texture that was with the pebble stamp and for this type of water um in here i didn't want it to look like a real super deep pool or something like that. I wanted it to be more of a shallow one. So that's where all these kind of rock textures come into play. So I'm giving it... Uh, the, you know, these rocks can represent rocks that are sticking out of the water, but they can also represent um, subsurface textures, you know, where you can... You know, there's a very clear pool of water, 
and these are the rocks that you can see underneath that a lot of times people um, make their water um, as if it were I don't know opaque and completely non-see-through surface and that's what they're thinking but when you add these sub kind of surface textures underneath it can really add to the visual space of that area so while we're doing everything on a two-dimensional surface this just looks a little bit more 3d when you add these types of textures um, into the mix and it's really easy to do okay now what i'm doing is i'm largely adding them around the perimeter okay because this is going to be a mirrored surface and i want um some of the scene that's stamped in the top portion of this mirror card reflected below. I don't want to fill that whole area in, especially in the middle of that foil. I want to, there to be a, a reasonable amount of um, untouched area in there, you know, so it would be reflective. Okay, now if you see, see my rocks down there um, on the bottom where they're stamped? I'm talking about the ones in the white. Yeah, there's some that white going above them. There's the smaller rocks on the left and right hand side. You know, they're not perfectly positioned in that white. Some of the white kind of bleeds over into that foil. And again, that's not something that I'm concerned about. I mean, I could kind of wipe it off with a paper towel or something like that. And it would come out at this point in time because the foil, um, even though the inks after being heat set are dry, um, they can still be wiped off if I rub it um, hard enough. You know, th so that being said, what we'll do is, you know, when I'm done, completely done with the project, what I do is I spray seal all of these. Okay, so I'm adding in some extra black into the uh, the scene. This being a cave scene, I, I, I want it fairly dark, so I'm creating this vignette type of effect in here, okay? Now see, I'm adding this extra black in there, adding shadows, but you know, just be careful not to cover up all of your textures and uh, imagery that you've already stamped down there. So uh, I'm not being super precise, you know, because I want some of those rocks to have some shading on them and some of them I don't. And there's not some kind of formula where it's like, okay, the third rock, you know, has to be dark, you know. <laughs> And the fourth one should be light. It's not like that. It's just you lighten some areas and you don't some other areas. And that's it. You create this oscillation of light and dark throughout your piece. And you'll see that um, in an even more extreme um, example when I do the top portion. Okay, now on the bottom portion, I'm using all brilliance black, okay? Because it can blend on foil and dry on foil, okay? No other ink can be blended like this and dried on foil unless you um, um, emboss. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm adding in my extra imagery now, okay? I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna have to fill in the rest of the scene here, okay? Now that bottom portion I kind of left a little bit lighter, but it kind of created a little bit too much space in there, so I'm stamping the uh, the boulders with lichen in there just to you know fill in that space a little bit. I wanted to create a little bit of a lighter space in there because I thought that was where originally I was going to stamp my figures, but that's what I was thinking at this point in time. But later on I decide, um, yeah, the figure's going to look better in the light. It's going to be more dramatic, so... You know, that's your prerogative to change things up as you go. Okay, now just for a different textural um, look, what I'm doing is I'm combining the smoother rock formations of the ledge stamp with the kind of the rougher formations of the boulders with lichen and brookside boulders. See that right there? And when you use these different types of rocks like this, they create a natural harmony. It's just like different colors of wood or something. Um, they create... Um, color harmonies and with rocks you can go with different textures and it all looks good because that's what does happen in a geological setting you know you get different types of rocks you get you know quartz amongst granite or whatever you know out in nature in this case you know combining those different textures they all merge together 
but from a textural standpoint you get a little bit of um, contrast and that's always good to do in your pieces all right but you can see I mean I did a little bit of masking down below but when I got to that ledge stamp I didn't do any masking at all now to a beginner they would feel that they need to mask everything but when you get using these stamps and kind of figure them out there's a lot more freedom that comes into play where you have to do less and less of the types of applications that you might normally think are needed when doing something like overlapping stamps. Okay, so I'm going with dye-based inks up top. This is just black Marvy, and I'm applying it with paper towel here. I'm using a light touch, okay? But see this? Okay, now it's where, here's the question. Where do you darken areas and where do you leave them light, okay? Now, there's no set formula. If I was to color this scene again or shade it like I'm doing right now, it would come out different than the time I did it here, okay? But the thing about it is, and I use this word all the time, is oscillation, okay? You want to oscillate things like textures, and in this case of shading, you oscillate light and darks, okay? So it doesn't really matter where you darken something and where you retain lightness as long as you do that throughout. And when you do that, you get a varied surface and um, a more varied surface lends itself to a potentially richer surface from a visual standpoint, okay? So you can see this where I'm applying some, you know, dark uh, ink. And I'm, it's black, but it's more of a gray um, value that I'm applying. Okay, now if I want it darker, I just apply more gray. So think about it that way, so you're not going so dark so fast. And that way you can really control your application. But see on all these rocks right here, I'm kind of oscillating light and dark. They call that checkerboarding. Okay. And that le it lends itself to, you know, this varied surface and it's very rich in terms of your in this case lighting scheme now if i was doing this in color you know it could be also you know come into play in a in terms of a color scheme later on you'll see me use an antique linen over all of this but i could have used a you know an antique linen which is a warm color and i could have used a in you know, like a blue in another area so i could have played around with the oscillation of warmth uh, or temperature warmth and cool but i wanted this to look more like a kind of an, an antique you know kind of uh i don't know not really a sepia print but kind of you know because uh of the antique linen um tone to it okay but see that how it's really starting to come into focus here in terms of our lighting scheme you have a lot of lights and darks now just in general though i usually like to darken my upper right and left and bottom lower and right and left um, corners okay we call that um, kind of vignetting and usually around on the perimeter it's a little bit darker too so you see that kind of darker top up top but um, i'm kind of following along the um, the shapes of the rocks too to some extent okay but you don't have to be a slave to that or anything like that Okay, but see how I'm kind of approaching one little area at a time, and I'll darken up the whole, you know, that little area, but I won't do it completely, and I'll start working in another area, and I'll bring that up to form, you know, I'll go with like a, let's, let's say, for example, a 40% gray over the whole thing, but now I'm going back into specific areas, and maybe making some areas a little bit darker, um, adding a little bit more ink or if I think like right underneath that cave opening you know where it's real light the area right below it I, I was looking at that later on I thought oh, okay wait that is too light in there so to bring more kind of attention to that opening in the cave what I'm doing is I'm darkening the area below it so see I kind of put a I don't know like a 10% gray over the top of that okay and there's our little figure there This whole process, there's, I usually don't heat set my dye based inks, but I've re-inked my uh, black Marvy pad um, 
when I was doing this, though, this scene right here, this top half of the scene, is really quite wet. Okay, so even after heat setting, what you'll find sometimes is going on and coloring in with some inks. You can get some of that black, and that black was, was rubbing off on my paper towel here, but that's fine. You know, you can just switch up, which I did there. I just kind of got a clean area of the paper towel. And instead of kind of wiping this ink, and I started doing more of a dabbing te technique, you know, to, so it wouldn't um, remove um, so much of the black. Okay, now what I'm doing here is I'm adding this in. Can you tell that it's kind of a richer gray? It's a warm gray now in there. But retain your light areas. Don't just tone them all out with that uh, coloring. Okay, now we're going in with what I call, I don't know, I call it fogging a lot of times. And it's going in and I'm adding in this white pigment ink with a 100% cotton cotton ball. And where it's really effective is where light meets darker, okay? So I'm starting it in the lightest area here, okay? Which is white. And see how it kind of makes the light in the scene a little bit more three-dimensional. The lighting is almost kind of uh, enveloping rocks and that figure back there. So when you do something like that, what you're doing is you're really creating a lot of textural range in your piece. Everything before it was crisp, okay? But now you have something soft, but it's also white, so you're doing two things at the same time. That um, kind of soft layering of uh, white ink over the top of something envelops them in light. So you're expanding your textural range, but you're also expanding on your lighting. And it becomes more kind of kinesthetic, you know, because you can feel kind of the dust or whatever in the air, the moisture in the air that's being illuminated by light. So it makes you aware of kind of the things in the air around you. Okay, and we're adding in some light beams here. Okay, I create a, a central kind of a, a, folk, a vanishing point for each beam. Okay, they all have the same vanishing point. And what you do is you start your tapping in of the ink closest to that light or in the light, and then you kind of dissipate it. So see over by the figure, I'm going to create more, a stronger beam by having more ink. So see, I'm starting it in there. And then as I, my cotton ball gets drier, I'm now doing it in the drier area like that. So it's not the same strength of beam. See how it kind of dissipates like that off to the edge? It's not a strong beam at the edge of the card, okay? And what you do is you vary the width of these. Have some kind of wider, some a little bit thinner, have some beams stronger, some beams weaker, you know, more see-through. And it looks more natural that way when you do that. Okay, now what I do after I create the beams is I add a little bit more pigment ink around the point of, uh, I don't know, where the beams are emanating from, okay? And that kind of blends them in because those beams can look a little bit harsh um, within that space. So you kind of soften them up a little bit. But see how that kind of second beam down from the top, see how see-through it is? So see that really um, helps the, the look. Okay, now I'm adding some of this down at the base here. Kind of it would represent where um, kind of the water is uh, kind of sitting in a pool and maybe there's some mist or something like that coming off the water surface. And just from a textural standpoint, again, it's, it's creating that illumination in the softer area down below. And it looks a little bit more 3D just inherently, okay? Hopefully the, um, the mirrored surface is going to create a, a nice three-dimensional look too, kind of, because it kind of is. I mean, these are both stamped on, you know, a two-dimensional surface, but when you view the, uh, the mirror card, at a 45 degree angle. I guess that is, you know, by nature, you know, three-dimensional structure, you know, an open card interior. 
Okay, so see, I'm adding some more of this pigment ink around there. Heavier at the opening, but then dissipated, okay? And uh, just a note, I always mention this in my videos, but that white pigment ink, when it dries, it becomes a little bit more transparent, or it moves towards transparency, I should say. So it becomes, when you're applying it over something that's darker, it'll look darker. So you have to go a little bit more than you think you're going to need. But you can also just let it dry here, or you can heat set it like I'm doing right here, and it heat sets in a couple seconds. I don't know if we're going to be able to tell. But yeah, I think we could tell right there. See, it became a little bit more... I don't know, they're not as white, the beams, okay? They're a little bit darker. Okay, now let's bring this scene alive. I think it looks pretty alive as is, but watch this when I start adding these little white dots, okay? Now these white dots, I'm adding it, see again, I'm starting it kind of in the lighter area. And then, see it's on the top of the rock, I put a, a kind of a higher concentration of dots, and then as you move away from the light on those objects, see in some of those rocks that are in the dark, it might be one or two little dots, you know. And then um, kind of in the darker areas, maybe less dots or less, you know, smaller concentration of them. See, that was like two dots there on that rock. But on the dots that are fairly light, I put more. Okay. But see, this is the way to kind of bring things to life. And these little dots like that, I don't know how they look to you, um, but if you look at your entire surroundings, your table, your desk area, you'll see these reflected little bits of light on everything. You'll see it on your lamp. If you have a pen, check on your pen caps. It doesn't matter if the pen is a white barrel or a black one. You'll see these little um, areas of specular light. That's little areas of reflected light. And little areas of reflected light are brighter than white, okay? Because they are light. They're being reflected. And that's what this represents. So, this is in, we're, we are surrounded by these little specks. You could be watching a TV in the dark or something like that, and you'll see those little highlights being reflected off any reflective surface. It's probably not reflecting off like a blanket or something like that, but any kind of hard surface for the most part has this little area of reflected light on it, okay? But look at what it's doing to those little areas. See then, I'm putting it in the beam on those, uh, the, on the walls and whatnot, but it kind of brings everything together. It kind of makes it, things sparkle. It's easy to go overboard, but if you're experimenting around with this, I don't know, just go overboard and have some fun. Okay, but see, as I'm doing this in here, um, that being said, when you're doing this, we're focusing on little tiny areas. We're focusing on probably a quarter inch square space on your card, okay? Hold the card out at arm's distance to see what these little details are doing to the overall, okay? But now, when you first start adding these in, if you add a couple little dots in one little area, it's going to look really strange. It has to be kind of a uniform or consistent type of... Um, texture throughout your piece, okay? See, like a few little dots in that water, that looks really weird on this bottom portion, but you add this in in more areas and it becomes kind of a, a uniform texture that makes sense. Okay, so adding this in. See on the tops of the rocks, I add more dots and then as I move into the shade, I have less so more dots on the tops of things, okay? And see, I have it reflected in my water as well. Some of those rocks that I stamped in the water, I just put a little dot on the top of it like that. See those little dots like that? These are one of those products that I get the most uh, questions about. It's like, what? white pen are you using? Everyone needs a really great white pen. And this is a 0.7 millimeter 
um, acrylic paint pen, and they work great. Now this is a water-based um, paint pen. One of these days I'm going to try out the oil-based uh, pens. And I've used those in the past, um, but not for a while. The, these white paint pens are not quite opaque. They're pretty strong, but not exactly um, as strong as one of the types of pens that I used, I don't know, 20 years ago. So those ones were oil-based, and I, I don't know, I should try them again. Okay, just a tape runner here to tape my... Uh, Scenes and I do that X in the middle. I figure that's enough for my uh, scenes here. You know, they don't have to be, you know, taped down more than that. Get it just reasonably straight. This is a pre-folded 5x7 uh, card. And I just used a black one, you know, a piece of paper. I figured uh, this scene is supposed to be in a cave. They're usually dark, so... I don't know, on the outside of this card it'll be black. And I'll, I'll stamp something else on the outside of the card. I haven't decided on that yet. But, you know, the biggest, uh, you know, visual is going to be on the inside. So that's what I've been focusing on mostly here. But I do love um, sequential aesthetics. So I'll put something on the outside of these cards that kind of relates to the inside. In this case, one of the things that I would probably do is I don't know, let's say if it was, you know, this card was going to someone, I'd put their name on the front, and I'd put a couple of these little crystals on the front, you know, because it has a little bit of a hint for something that they, um, they'll they kind of witness when opening the card, you know. In this case, I used, um, I don't know, just so many different crystals, which I'll get to in a minute here. The longest, the thing that took the longest in this whole um, card was I added... I don't know, I might have added 50 little crystals into this um, composition because I really wanted to, I really wanted it to really um, explode with reflective little elements. Okay, so I put a big glob of glue down. I didn't need all of that, but as it turned out, and I have my little push pin there that I always keep um, with my glue. I had it there originally just so I can unclog because that glue tip. Because if I don't use that glue um, for even a couple days, it tends to harden up right in the tip there. So I have this little push pin handy. But I found that this push pin was... I can get a little bit more precise in terms of my uh, placement of like a little drop of glue. This glue is really super thick, so if I just use it straight from the... Uh, the bottle there, it leaves this kind of like string, stringy type of melted cheese type of thing. It, I don't know, it drags out, so I get a little bit more precise with that. So I fast forwarded through a lot of this here because you don't want to see me place, um, you know, like 50 of these little crystals. These little um, gem holders um, or gem pickers or whatever they're called are really handy because you can get these tiny little crystals laid down. Um, pretty precisely with them, and it just has a little bit of a rubber tip on it. Okay, so this is starting to come together. I don't know if you can see that really. Yeah, there you go. You can see a little reflective area right there. And those crystals down at the bottom there, those are the ones that in the end you can see really reflective in the, um, the reflection there in the uh, silver foil at the end. So this is a pretty fun um, I don't know, structure to play around with, you know, and there's a lot of different types of things, you know, water situations and scenic stamping, and this is one that's a little bit different um, in terms of it being a cave, but I thought it worked pretty effectively. And I wish more of those beams would show up in the reflection, but uh, I, I, I had them too high, so you can't really see them too well. So see that right there? You can kind of see them, you know, the beams in there. A little bit but you have to kind of uh, close the uh, scene off a little bit more but anyways fun stuff and hope you enjoyed the card and if you have any questions please leave it in the comment section thanks so much for watching